Hello Cruising World, Mick the Suit Guy with you. Today I'm going to talk about Faster to the Fun. New prices came out so I'm going to go over it and give you my opinions on whether I think it is worth it for you to buy it. Just my opinions. Uh, how do you like my suit? Halloween appropriate because this video is coming out on Saturday, October 28th. So we are close to Halloween. I could have done my uh, skulls, could have done my pumpkins and I've got another blood one over there but I went with blood. Bloody blood. Anyway, um, so yeah, faster to the fun. New prices came out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the new pricing, what you get, what you don't get, and stuff like that. Give you my opinion on all the benefits. The ultimate goal of this video is for you to decide for yourselves whether it is worth you getting faster to the fun or not. Um, I mean, it's one of those things where I'm not in a position to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. I'm here to give you my reasoning why you should or shouldn't. Uh, as you'll find out, I'm pretty much on the shouldn't side of it. In fact, I'm pretty much 100% on the shouldn't side of it. But that's just my opinion. I also uh, asked my Facebook group for some uh, suggestions uh, and what their thoughts were. And I got some of those, which I will cover at the end of this video also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the faster to the fun, uh, what you get and give you my input on each of the what you get, then show you the pricing. And, and then we'll look at what my Facebook group said. And then from there, you should be fully armed and able to make a decision on whether it is good for you or not. Again, I'm not saying to do it or not to do it. I'm just telling you what I would do and reasoning why I wouldn't do it, which is pretty much what I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna put this up on the screen, but I got it all written down here. So it's easier for me. I can't do all this by memory. So faster to the fun, is currently open through 2024. Faster to the Fun is not offered on Carnival Journeys departures, cruises in Europe, nor on cruises from Norfolk and San Francisco. Uh, translated as there's a lot of diamond and platinum cruises on that ship, and Faster to the Fun numbers are limited by how many platinum and diamond people are on the ships. That's why you don't get them on the journeys, because like we just did the Greenland journeys, and over 50% of the ship was either platinum or diamond. Please note the VIFP Club Diamond and Platinum members do not need to purchase this package as these and other benefits are included as part of your VIFP Club status. Guests travelling in suite accommodations are also entitled to these benefits with the exception of a dedicated phone extension and line at guest services, which is quite surprising to me. I thought that suite people could join the Proudly line and I'm going to double check that when I'm on the Venezia. Uh, as I speak. I'm videoing this, it's coming out on the 28th of October, and today I'm in New York, on the Venezia, waiting to go on a 12-day journeys cruise, no faster to the fun on this one, to the Southern Caribbean. We're going to Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Thomas, St. Martin, it's gonna be an awesome cruise. And I just got back from a five-day first leg, it's a back-to-back, to, -back to uh, Bermuda, hopefully. We didn't end up going to uh, the Bahamas because of bad weather. Well, we'll find out, I'm recording this in advance. So, um, yeah, so I'm in line at guest services now asking if sweet people can go there. But fortunately, couldn't get the answer before this video came out because recorded it early. So let's go over what the program includes and I'm gonna give you my input on each of these options. Number one, priority check-in. Upon arrival to the terminal during your arrival appointment, look for the priority line to check in. So yes, it's true, you are gonna get priority. Diamond is gonna get on board first, then sweets, then platinum then faster to the fun, then everybody else. Here's the thing, if you've been on these cruises and you've been in the, in the embarkation lounge, uh, you, it moves pretty quick. If you just go online and check in at your earliest opportunity, you're probably get, gonna get on a minute or two after the faster to the fun people. So, you know, you can tell, you know when you can check in, it, it will give you the times. Uh, it's like midnight, two weeks before your cruise, Platinum and Diamond people get 16 days in, in advance. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if Faster to the Fun gets the 16 day note or they're at 14. It's a good question. I'm not sure about that. I'd have to look that one up. If you know the answer to that, please put it in the comments because I don't know. But regardless, if you're one of the first people to check in, you're not going to be far behind Faster to the Fun. Uh, literally minutes, if. If you're lazy and you check in two days later, then you might be a bit further back. But if it really is important to you and you look at the prices of this program and you want to save it and not do it, there's ways around it on each of these points, that's the way to do it for this point. Just check in as early as you can 
and select the earliest embarkation window that you have available to you. Number two, stateroom access. Once on board, you'll be able to drop off your bags in your stateroom until your room is ready. Okay. Yes, that is true. Platinum Diamond Suites, faster to the fun, are the only people that are allowed to drop their bags off in the room. Let me tell you this. Off the record, if you take your bag to the room and you just say to, I'm just dropping my bag off, no one's going to question if, if you're Platinum or Diamond. They just don't. Long, they're too busy to worry about it. Drop it off and go. Even better, throw them $5, throw them $10. I'm just dropping my bags off. I appreciate you. Here's this. That'll work in two ways. Number one, it will make the biggest smile on their face. But also, they're not going to forget that for the rest of the cruise. So you're going to get preferential treatment. Just my two cents. But uh, yeah, should you be doing it? No. Is anybody going to stop you? No. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know about that one. Uh, Express luggage. Your luggage will be expedited to your stateroom so you can unpack and get settled in for a great vacation. Okay. <laughs> I mean, oh dear. Uh, it's impossible to do that with the number of bags they're bringing on board. I can genuinely and honestly tell you, sometimes, yeah, my luggage comes a bit early. Uh, most of the time it comes with everybody else's. It's all dumped off. And, and sometimes I get it last. I really don't think that they genuinely have a way. It, it, they might put it in an express line, but they don't express deliver it. Because my bags, there's so many times, we'll go down and check on bags through the afternoon, and the whole floor has got bags except us. You know? So, yeah. I don't buy into that one bit. But, yeah, they want to say it, let them say it. If you think I'm wrong, put it in the comments. But, uh, yeah, my bags do not always show up early. <laughs> I can tell you that. Because it's important for me because I've got to get my suits out. And, you know, I've got to know that I've got stuff for, to wear in the evening. We have a lot of unpacking to do. Guest services. You will have a dedicated phone number and line at guest services so you can quickly have your questions answered. Uh, the dedicated phone number, I'm not sure. I don't know how that works because um, I think what happens is when you call down to guest services, maybe your phone number shows as faster to the fund so they'll answer it quicker i don't know we we've never really noticed that so i, I don't know how that works um another question i'm going to ask when i go on the next cruise but um as far as the the guest services line i'll give you this yes absolutely a good benefit if you go in at peak times if you're in no rush and you go like during dinner service or you go early in the morning or you go later at night there's rarely a line at those times if you go 20 minutes after they post gratuities <laughs> or if you go you know when you first get on board or like a, just at peak times in the day yeah there's going to be a long line that you could save by going to the priority line what possible reason would you have to go to guest services that had to be answered there and then and couldn't wait until it's quieter and go back then just throwing it out there you know, does, does your problem have to be addressed immediately or could it wait a little while? And if it has to be addressed immediately, that means there's a major problem in the cabin or something. Then you can call emergency numbers. You can run to the front of the line. Look, my cabin's flooding. Please help me. You know, that's an important thing. Questioning a charge on your account. Is it that important? Uh, if you've lost your sign and sale card, that's kind of important because somebody else could have it and be charging on it. You know, so weigh it off you know, on, on things like that. And if someone's stolen your, you lost your card, I would politely ask to go to the front of the line because you've got to get that sorted. And you you might upset a few people, but I'm sure that you'll get that sorted. So I, I, you know, I don't know. Dining reservations. Priority main dining and specialty restaurant reservations, including, excluding your time dining. Okay, let's look at this. How many people do late or early dining over your time? Way more than half people on every cruise now do your time dining. So there is no priority for your time dining whatsoever for anybody. Um, priority main dining room means you're either early or late dining. Now, you're, when you book your cruise, you're going to select one of those, right? And if, if you forgot to select it, you can just call in the carnival. If you have a travel agent, they'll take care of it for you. Um, but you'll get that done early. If you wait until check-in to do it, because there's 
way fewer places on early and late dining now because so many people want to do your time, it may not be available at that point. And when you get on board, why would you need to make that decision then? You've made it in advance. So how is that benefiting you? I don't know. Specialty dining reservations. Um, again, most people do those online in advance. You can book it in advance now. You can use your onboard credit towards it, which is great. And if you want a good dining time, if you don't do it in advance, chances are most of those times are gone by the time you get on board. And your priority is faster than fun is going to come behind Platinum, behind Diamond, behind Suites. So you're kind of fourth in line on the priority. Uh, I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. Uh, just saying. Prove me wrong. Um, priority water shuttle boarding. We hope you take advantage of Carnival's excursions. If you choose to explore the destination on your own, you have the option to choose a priority water shuttle from the ship to shore. Okay, so if you are on a Carnival excursion, it doesn't matter. They're going to put you on a shuttle appropriate to the time of your excursion. You don't have to worry about it. The only time this would be big is if you had a private tour and you had to get ashore early. Um, bear in mind, there's only maybe five main ports in the U.S. I think that have tenders. Like, quote me, correct me if I'm wrong. Grand Cayman, Belize, Catalina, Cabo, Princess Kays. I, I may be missing some others, but you know, there's not a huge number of tender ports anyway. And the chances of you having two tender ports, I, I off the top of my head, certainly not Cabo and Catalina on the same cruise. Um, possible. Grand Cayman and Belize, I don't, if there are, there's not many. So there's very rarely going to be a time when you have multiple tender ports on a cruise, unless you're like on a journeys cruise, when you can't do faster to the fun anyway. So, um, and it, in the priority in the morning is usually a small gap first thing in the morning. So like if the ship gets in at seven, you're going to get priority tender from maybe 7.30 to nine. And then after that, it's just, there's no more priority. So, uh, and it depends on the ship, how long that priority gap is, but it's usually between one and a half and two hours, I would say, uh, not much longer than that. So, um, and there's no priority coming back on the ship. Everybody's just in one long line getting back. So it's only getting off, not getting on. So in my opinion, the only time that would really factor in, like I said, is if you had a private tour ashore, you had to get ashore for it so it didn't leave. Then it could be an issue. But you could also, if you have a bit of flexibility, you can just go down to the guest services and ask when they are going to put the shuttle tickets out and then make sure you're there when they go out. You don't have to go there four hours early like so many, I'll be polite, people did on the, the Legend Cruise to Greenland recently, but they stood in line for four or five hours to get tender tickets. The tender process moves very smoothly once it gets started. So you're not going to be waiting too, too long. Um, but there's ways around it. You know, but that is one. I'll give you that as one time when it could be good if you have a tender and you have a shore excursion that's private to get ashore for. Debarkation. We always we're always sad to see you go, but when your cruise is over, you may choose an early or late debarkation time upon arrival to your home port. Um, yeah, I mean, again, it, 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 can you really? Uh, you're you're going to get earlier stickers uh, or labels if you check your bags. But um, and they might call you, you know, they might give you a note if you're self assist when you can get off. But if you really have to get off the ship, for example, you've got an early flight, just tell them you have an early flight. They're going to let you get off early anyway. Uh, outside of that, is there really a real crunch time when you have to get off that you couldn't wait 10, 15, 20 minutes? Because once the priorities get off on the self assist, they start pretty quickly on everybody else. So, uh, Unless you're in a real rush to get off. And again, if you are, tell them, just say you have an early flight and they'll put you on. They can't prove you do or don't. <laughs> I didn't say that again. Ways around everything, everybody. Uh, and they'll do that. And if you do check your bags, you can't get off until they're ready. So it's not like you're going to get off super early that way anyway. Uh, and going back to the flights, by the way, I don't ever recommend booking an early flight unless it's the only one you can do. Try and book one mid-afternoon and on. Be safe. Especially if you're in a port like Port Canaveral or Galveston, where it's quite a drive to Orlando or to Houston to get the planes, just allow appropriate time. Don't put it. Don't stretch yourself too thin. So yeah, I mean, just ask yourself the question on all of these 
programs because I'm going to show you the prices in a second. When you see the prices, is that price worth what you get for these? And I, I gave you, in my opinion, explanations on why or how you can get around all of those. Is it worth the money? When we used to do it, and, and like I said, before we, we became um, a platinum, we used to get faster to the fund every cruise. It was the first thing we did. We thought it was the greatest thing. But we didn't know the ways around it then. We, we didn't know how to weigh it up. Is it worth it? Is it not? We just thought, boom, this is great. I want to get on the ship as early as possible. I want to get in the Red Frog and get my first beer. Now, I would probably wouldn't do it. Although the pricing was much, much, much better then. It's way expensive now. It's, it was much better then. Speaking of pricing, let's have a look. The price is per stateroom, so only one guest needs to purchase faster to the fun, and all occupants in the stateroom receive the benefits. Prices are subject to change and may vary by ship. Faster to the fun is subject to availability. How many platinum, how many diamonds are on board? That's the way they're going to work it. And they could cut it off at any point. So like I said, if you know you want to do this, do it early. Don't leave it too late and be disappointed when it's not available anymore. Just because it shows there today doesn't mean it's going to show tomorrow. But look at the difference in prices between 2023 and 2024. And I'd love to have the prices from like, pre-COVID on this, you know, for a seven day cruise, it used to be like 50 bucks or something like that. Now, now look at it. Um, $10 increase across the board, pretty much on everything. So if you're doing a nine plus day cruise, you're looking at $190 a cabin. Now that is not per person, it's per cabin, but that's a lot of money. Think what you could do with that. You know, I, I think if you were worried about the uh, whole getting off the ship because you had a private excursion and you're on a nine day cruise, uh, just Book the cheapest carnival cruise. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Give it to somebody else. And it's going to be cheaper than $190 to get your uh, priority off the ship. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. So, yeah, that pricing is quite steep, in my opinion, um, for what you get. So, again, I, I'm going to say this over and over. I'm going to try not to say it anymore. You've got to weigh it off. The benefits of what you get, is it worth what you pay? Simple as that. In my opinion, no. But it could be in yours. And if you do, I'm not going to judge you. I am not going to say, ah, oh, you wasted your money, you idiot. Why did you buy faster to the fun? For a lot of people, it's peace of mind. It makes you feel more comfortable and relaxed. And, you know, then if it does, do it. I'm not saying don't do it. Um, I'm just saying I would. A few facts on faster to the fun. As we said, the faster to the fun is not per person. It is per stateroom. It covers all occupants of the staterooms. Only one guest needs to purchase and all occupants receive the benefits. And you might think to yourself, oh, my friends are in a cabin next to me. I can just have them get off of me. Yeah, you probably can. I'm not going to say it won't work that way. Uh, I many, many times as, as a diamond, I've taken people off with me that were not diamond. They've never said a word. So I can't guarantee it, but yeah, you should be fine. Um, for guests sailing on multiple cruises back to back, that means, like, for example, the one I'm on now, as you watch this, I was on last week and I ship came back into New York and I'm staying on for the next cruise. That's a back to back. So two cruises in a row. Uh, the faster to the fun must be purchased for each cruise in order to benefit from the program. So imagine if you're on the one I'm on, which you wouldn't be because there's no tender ports. So you should never do this if there's no tender ports, in my opinion. But if you did, you'd be paying almost two hundred dollars for uh, for the faster to the fun. Uh, sorry, $290 for the faster to the fun over the two cruises. A lot of money. Faster to the fun can only be purchased prior to the cruise. A la carte services cannot be purchased on board. I guess that's something they have to put in there, but why would you ever not buy it in advance? One of the main reasons for it is to get on the ship early for most people. So if you didn't buy it in advance, you're not getting on the ship early. So I guess why that's in there, I don't know. We'll move on. The number of people who may purchase the faster to the fun package will be capacity controlled based on the number of VIFP diamond and platinum members booked on the sailing. Like I said, they're going to have a number in mind. Once it hits that number, they're going to shut faster to the fun down. And just because it shows that your cruise is available today doesn't mean it's going to be available tomorrow. So if you know you are going to do this, book it as early as possible to make sure you have it. Um, Guests who completed their online check-in prior to purchasing the Faster to the Fun package will need to reprint their boarding pass and luggage tags so the Faster to the Fun stamp reflects on the documents. That show it, that's so it shows priority um, when you'll get the express luggage to your room. Um, I guess one of the things uh, you could say was, you know, 
you could wait until you go on the cruise and check in and see if you got an early boarding time. And if you didn't get an early boarding time, then you could buy faster to the fun. And if it wasn't available, you weren't that worried about it anyway. So that could be one way of looking at it. Because again, if you get an early boarding time, you're going to be on almost right after the faster to the fun people. Uh, and then lastly on here, all guests, including faster to the fun guests, are required to select an arrival appointment that works best with their plans when completing online check-in. We will not be able to accommodate faster to the fun guests who show up at a time prior to their selected arrival appointment window. Upon arrival to the terminal, guests must look for the priority line to check in. If faster to the fun guests arrive after their selected arrival appointment window, they will be accommodated in the priority line. That's all worst case scenarios. I'm pretty confident that on the day they would be somewhat flexible, uh, even though some of the embarkation people aren't always the nicest, most of them are. Um, yeah, I think you'll be fine. So that's, a lot of this is like, you know, deterrent notes in there to try and make you arrive on time. I, I don't think it would be the end of the world. If anybody's done that and have showed up at a different point, please put in the comments, did they stop you getting on or did they just say, next time, do it better. But they let you go through anyway. So that's that. So yeah, so uh, that is the Faster to the Firm program in, in a nutshell. I'm going to read you some of the comments from my Facebook group and then we'll do a quick summarize. Uh, Barbara says, I used it when I had knee problems so I wouldn't be standing so long. I think it's a great idea for families with small kids so they can get through the process sooner and they can use the shorter line at guest services so they can get back to their family. And I can't argue with that unless you apply what I said earlier. If you check in as early as possible, you won't be standing around in the embarkation lounge for too, too long, much longer than faster to the fun at all. And if you go to guest services at a slower time, there won't be as much of a line. But um, yeah, if it, it, I think it's a lot of peace of mind for a lot of people, knowing that they are just guaranteed to get on early or they're guaranteed to get a short line at guest services, you know. But again, is it worth it for the price you pay? When the prices we used to pay, yes, it was worth it. But the prices today, you make the call. Anastasia says, as I only buy faster to the fun if I have a significant number of tender ports or if I'm traveling with a first timer to give them a more VIP experience. But since I travel solo 99% of the time, that's a lot of money for something that doesn't really give me a lot of benefit. I don't need to get off the ship first and there's usually room for one person no matter when I want to board a tender. Valid points valid points again like i said you're not going to have many cruises at all that have a lot of tender ports where you can have faster to the fun typically it's going to be on some journeys cruises where they go to some of the more random ports and they don't allow it on those cruises anyway because there's so many platinum and diamond members on board but yeah no arguments and the rest of it um sandra i think it's a huge waste of money how do you really feel sandra last time we got it we literally got on the ship two minutes before those without it to my point for $10 tip, the steward will let you drop off your bags early. $5, $10, or even nothing, but I recommend $5, $10, uh, and they won't say a word. As for shows, just get there early and you get a good seat. Most cruises don't have tenders, so you get zero benefits from that. If your cruise is port tender heavy and you did not get carnival excursions, I can see why you might get it. But other than that, just hand your steward $10 and drop your bags off. Way cheaper that way. Save your money for something else. Uh, one thing I will say, I have to point out where it says, as for shows, just get there early and you get a good seat. There's no priority uh, for shows. It's first come, first serve, diamond, platinum, whatever. You don't get any priority on shows, on carnival, um, com comedy club. I wish you did, but you do not. Um, yeah, the, the $10 tip thing's great. Um, port tender heavy, again, I'll, I'll stress it again. There's not many cruises that are port tender heavy where faster to the fun is applicable. Uh, the only, like I said, the only one I could possibly see, and correct me if I'm wrong, would be Grand Cayman and Belize. And I don't think there's many cruises that go to both, if any. Lastly, Mel, my good friend Mel. We met Mel on the Greenland cruise. Awesome person. Wowzers, I, even, even though she's Canadian. Oops. Wow, I didn't mean it, Mel. I didn't mean it. Wowzers, I know. I, maybe I did. I don't, no, I didn't mean it. Wowzers, I know I didn't pay nearly that much when I used it. I had it for some cruises before I turned platinum, but some of my cruises were journeys and not available. The only perk really was priority on and off the ship. Looking back, I'm not sure I really needed it. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Mel. I mean, you know, just summarizing my thoughts on it, I think the only, of all of the benefits to the program, 
The only ones where I could see it being justified would be the priority water shuttle boarding. If you had a private tender ashore that you had to get off early to catch, a, a private excursion ashore you had to get off early, or maybe the guest services if you didn't want to have to go at random times. You wanted to go whenever you wanted to go for peace of mind. You know, the priority check-in, again, check in early, you're good. Stateroom access, throw your room steward at five or $10 or, or whatever you want to do, or just say, I'm just dropping my bag off and leaving. They're not going to say anything. Express luggage, waste of time. Guest services, dining reservations, pointless. Priority water shuttle boarding, like I said, could be good, and debarkation. Mm. So, um, you know, just my opinion and some of my Facebook members, is it worth it? You make the call. It's your cruise. We are not here to tell you what to do. I said we now because I got backup. Um, just our opinions. So, uh, yeah, apply it. Circle it around in your head. Weigh it off. Is it worth it for what I'm paying? And if you think it is, great, do it. Peace of mind is a wonderful thing. If not, hopefully my suggestions or our suggestions would help you. And, uh, you know, you don't have to spend the money. Spend it on something else. More tips for the crew would be my suggestion. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe. Hit that little bell and you'll get notifications when my videos come out. I try and do one every Monday, Thursday and Saturday. Monday, I put out a tips video. You can send me your tips. I will read them. I don't read them in advance. I read them live and react as I record. So be warned about that. If you have cruising traditions, send me those as well. On a Thursday, I like to put out a ship uh, cabin video. And on a Saturday is a video like this, just a miscellaneous type video. And if you have any suggestions on videos you would like to see, uh, number one, check my uh, back catalog because I've got a lot of videos out there. I'm closing in on 400 videos. So that it might be already covered, but it could be due an upgrade. You know, I've done one on this before. It was due an upgrade. So uh, we did that. So yeah, and with that, I will see you later, Cruising World. Any questions? Email me anytime. Cruisingsuitguy at gmail.com. I promise I'll reply as soon as possible. Want to book a cruise or any type of travel? We are travel agents. Check out our site, elitetravelconnection.com or email me, mick at elitetravelconnection.com. We are here for you. Finally, subscribe, please. Pretty please. You know you want to. Go on. I won't beg you. Okay, I'm begging. Please. Subscribe. Thank you.